This video is going to show us a strategy for comparing rates, this time with unit rates. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video will be how can you use or how can we use unit rates to compare different rates so that we can see a comparison among two different things. Sometimes we want to know things, for example, who is faster or which item at the grocery store is cheaper. Unfortunately, the information we are given can sometimes be hard to compare. Let me show you an example of a time where it might be hard to know immediately which of these people is faster. Let's say we know how fast Mr. O'Neill can run five miles, and it takes him 48 minutes to run those five miles. But then we know Mr. Olson can run three miles in 22 minutes. If I wanted to know who was faster, it could be a little bit tricky at the moment. After all, Mr. Olson didn't spend as much time running, but he also didn't run quite as far as Mr. O'Neill, who was able to go five miles instead of three. There's more than one way to assess this, but one thing we could do is to find the unit rate for both Mr. O'Neill and Mr. Olson. After all, if we know how long it takes each of them to run just one mile, we'll have a common um, rate or a common amount that we can use to compare. It'll be much more friendly. So let's find the unit rate for Mr. O'Neill and Mr. Olson and we'll see who ends up being faster. I'm going to start with Mr. O'Neill and to find the unit rate for Mr. O'Neill I'm going to use proportions or equivalent ratios that are set up as fractions. So I've started to set this up and I know it takes Mr. O'Neill 48 minutes to run five miles so I have that on the first part of my ratio, my equivalent ratio, and then I'm trying to figure out how long it takes him to run one mile. So since I have miles in the denominator, I'm going to go ahead and put one mile here as my denominator on the other side. And I can see right away that if I divide 5 by 5, I get 1, so I'm going to need to divide 48 by 5, which is not something that is a nice whole number. I'll have to do just a little quick long division down here, 48 divided by 5 to find out how long it takes him to run one mile. Hopefully by doing that you'll see and, and agree with me that it took him 9.6 minutes to run his one mile. So now to figure out how fast Mr. Olson runs his one mile, I'm going to do the same thing. So just as before, I've set it up. Now I know that he's running 22 minutes um, to make it three miles. So here if I'm going to figure this out, I need to figure out how far, it, how long it takes him to go one mile. So just like before, I'm realizing I need to divide by three and by three. And once again, I picked some numbers that were not super obvious, so I might have to do a little long division down here to figure out what I get. So go ahead and do that as well. And hopefully you'll agree that it takes him about 7.3 minutes. I'm going to add that up here so I have it. 7.3 minutes to run one mile. And that three keeps repeating, but it rounds to the nearest tenth would be um, just three tenths there. Right. And now that I have that, right, I can compare their one minute mile times, and I can see here that Mr. Olson can run faster. Sorry, that was supposed to make a star there. Can run faster because it takes him less time to go just one mile. We can do the same thing if we want to compare prices to figure out what's the better deal or what's the cheaper price. I use this one all the time in my daily life because I want to make sure I'm getting a good deal. So if we're, for example, trying to buy peanut butter, um, we can see that 40 ounces of peanut butter would cost $6 and 16 ounces of peanut butter costs $2.80. Since they're not the same size, right, this one's a much larger package than this one, I can't necessarily know right away which is the better deal. Obviously this one costs less, but I get way more peanut butter on this one, right? So to figure out um, the better deal, I'll figure out how much one ounce of each peanut butter costs to see which one is cheaper. I need to find the unit price to do that. I'm going to use the same strategy as before where I'm going to set up my proportion to make sure that I realize, oh, I have to divide this by 40, which means I have to divide my $6 by 40 which means it's going to be a pretty small amount per ounce. I'm going to go ahead and make some long division space here at the bottom to figure out what 6 divided by 40 would be. 
And of course, hopefully if I did this correctly, I find out that it is 15 cents for every one ounce of peanut butter. That's the rate. For every ounce of peanut butter I'm buying, I'm paying 15 cents. Now I need to figure out the unit price for the 16 ounce jar, and so I'll do the same setup. And once again, I'm looking for the unit rate. This time I'll have to divide by 16 to make that work. So I'm gonna have to divide $2.80 by 16 as well, and I'll give myself some room to do some long division since I don't have that off the top of my head. Doing the long division, I see that it ends up being um, zero, right? and 175 thousandths, but this is money and it has to go to the nearest hundredths. So this five tells me to round up, so it's actually going to be about 18 cents per ounce. Right? So now I have two equivalent ratios. They're both in, or two equal ways to look at this, right? I can see both of them as a unit rate and I can see, oh, this one is actually cheaper because I'm paying less for each ounce, I'm only paying 15 cents instead of 18 cents. So remember that the essential question of this video today was to see how we could compare rates using unit rates, and we saw two examples of that, being able to see who was faster, or being able to see which item was cheaper. We're gonna play around with this in class, of course, um, but make sure you come with any questions you might have so we can go over those together.